is Beatrice Ndongo. I am a branding and public relations expert in East Africa. I do a lot of things. I brand uh, people in government. I brand celebrities as well as businesses. Uh, one of my major clients is the former president of Tanzania, Mr. Kikwete. And apart from uh, branding, I also own a couple of companies. I have an oil company. Um, I do oil from Oman. I also have a couple of businesses in the perfume industry. I just recently um, launched my radio station in Tanzania. I just heard your voice. I think we're going to talk. Um, what else do I do? Um, I'm also into gold. I mine gold. I also um, have a company where I bring in, I think you talked about that. I bring in uh, machines, machines for, for construction basis. Um, so the trailers and so on and so forth. So I do a couple of things. I started in Kenya. My business is in Tanzania, in Dubai, <clears throat> in Dubai, in uh, where else? <laughs> uh, Malawi, and uh, Rwanda as well. Um, yeah, but I truly started in Kenya. Wow, wow, wow. That's a lot of things. You are even forgetting where your other business, like seriously, you want to get to have the level where you've even forgotten. Um, where is my other business again? You know, like the way you forget where is my other bank account? Or you forget how much money, do you guys forget how much money you have in your bank account? If you don't, by the way, to go down, yeah? <laughs> so Beatrice, thank you so much. But then, you know, I'm going to go back to what you have said about uh, your introduction. You practice in Tanzania. How is that? Um, I started business when I was 19. I'm way older now. But I started when I was 19 with no money, no money at all. Uh, one day I was in my room, I was sleeping. I woke up, I just said, I'm going to Tanzania. So um, I went on the internet. I knew nobody in Tanzania, no one. So what I did was I went online. I went to, I was doing practicing PR. I'm going to tell you that story um, after, after. So, um, I was very good in PR, so I was like, you know what, I need people to know about me. So I went online, I, went to, uh, I wanted to do a, a media tour in Tanzania. So I went to the famous TV stations and radio stations, then I started calling them. I called them, I told them, my name is Beatrice, I do PR, I want to do a media tour, I'm coming to Tanzania. All of them said, fine, ukifika Tanzania, tuambie. So what I did was, um, the next day I told my parents, you know what, I want to go to Tanzania. So they were like, hmm? Tanzania, you don't know anybody. I said, I'm just going. So I took a bus. There's a guy who used to work in Tanzania. So I asked him, hey, do you know anyone who stays in Tanzania? I can just stay there for like three days. So he gave me a number. So I took a bus for 13 hours. I went all the way to Dar es Salaam. Uh, I reached there at around 10 p.m. Then the guy, um, I was very confused because I was at a bus station. I know nobody. I'm confused. So what I did, I called him. I said, I'm here. Then uh, he came, picked me up. The next day, I took a bajaji. A bajaji is a tuk-tuk. I took a bajaji to do my uh, rounds around Tanzania. I did my media tour. And after doing my media tour, I came back to, to Kenya after three days. Coming back to Kenya, I was like, you know what? People have already known about me. I have to go back. So I went back, took a hotel. I was there for one and a half months. I did my research. After one and a half months, I saw a need to open a company. So I uh, partnered with someone in Tanzania. Luckily, I got to know a couple of people. Then when I got that person, um, I got a, an office in Tanzania, a place called Masaki. Masaki is like Runda. I got an office there. Then um, I remember the power of social media. I remember I didn't know anyone. I have no clients. I have nothing. There's someone here in branding here. Uh, I think this guy. I had you, yeah. So I was doing branding. I have no clients, nobody. So what I did was I used the power of social media. I went online. Then I, I looked for someone who's very well known in Tanzania. And there was this guy called Lemutus. He's a very big celebrity. So I DM'd him. I stepped into his DM, Nikamambia, yo, 
What's up? My name is Beatrice. I do PR. One hour later, he was in my office. Maybe I looked so pretty on Instagram. <laughs> one hour later, <laughs> he was in my office. I told him about me. Then one hour later, he told me, Yo, are you hungry? Do you want to go for dinner? I said, yeah, why not? He took me to a hotel called City. While we were there, he had already agreed to be, you know, my client. While we were there, there's this guy who came to, to our table. He said, hi, hi. Then he introduced himself as Mr. Rithi One. So I didn't know who he was, but I gave him my card. I told him I do PR and branding. He just said he's an MP. I said, okay, cool. So he said, I'm coming to, my, to your office. Two days later, I came to my office. Remember, I have no clients. This is my first time. I'm just working with my confidence. That's it. Two days later, this guy comes to my office. He parked way far, you know, very far from my office. So he came walking. So I was like, oh my God, this guy, he's coming. He doesn't have a car. He's just walking to money. I won't overcharge. So he came in. Then he said, yeah, I'm an MP and I really want branding. I said, cool, this is my amount. You pay this. He didn't even bargain. I, yani, I gave him a ridiculous amount. He didn't even bargain. I'm like, hey, uyu ata na gari ya mitembea tu wa bargain. So anyway, um, he said, I want to start immediately tomorrow. I said, fine. I've studied law, so I know how I do my own contracts. So the next day he comes to the office. He says, I'm ready. This is the money. So I asked him, okay, give me your full names. He said, my name is Rithi Wan Kikwete. So I was like, hmm, are you related to Kikwete? He said, no, that's my father. I was like, damn it. So where is your, where was that car? <laughs> Kumbe, he had parked so far, then he was looking for the office. So um, after that, he introduced me to his father, Mr. Jakaya Kikwete. And that's how now I started branding the family. And that's how now my name became, you know, big in Tanzania. So I got many clients. And from there, I started other big businesses. Doors just opened. I went into oil. I went into gold. I'm still doing branding. God is good. Wow. You know, <laughs> your story is like so powerful. But then I know yeah. Oh, yes. What's it? Doors. Yeah, because Those I mean, I'm viewers here who are trying to just break through and it's not happening. And when you say it, it sounds so easy. What is this? Trust you me, it's not easy. Can you hear the nose? Now, let me go back to how I started. <laughs> uh, when I was 19, um, I finished high school. My parents didn't have the money. I have a smaller, bro- younger brother. In fact, the, the one of the, the girlfriend is here as well. My sister in, in law is here. So um, my bro n- needed to go to school. And um, so I, d- I told my parents, you know what? You pay for him. Then me, I'll hustle. I'll see what to do. But I did pass in high school. So one day, the power of social media, man. Social media is so powerful. Facebook was just starting, I think. So I just joined and... Uh, when I joined, there's this guy who was called William. William used to used to hit on me all the time. Like, So one day, I, I wrote a message to him. I told him, hey, I see that you work for Raila Foundation. Please connect me with Mr. Raila. Then he was the prime minister, is it? I think he was the prime minister. So he said, okay, I don't have his number, but I have the son's number, Mr. Fidel. So I was like, and I was 19, remember? confidence is king so i was 19 so the guy gave me fidel's number i remember it was 7 p.m he gave me the number at 9 p.m i went to my room locked myself then i called that number so he said hello and he said hello I was like, oh, that's him and i asked him am i speaking to fidel mr fidel odinga they said yes this is fidel who am i speaking to i clearly i was so nervous so so nervous so but i decided no what come what me i don't care at least i tried so i told him my name is beatrice i want to start an online magazine i just need your help i did not want money i didn't want money at all what i wanted was just someone to tell me what to do that was just what i wanted what should i do i have an idea please tell me what do i do so I told him, I just need you to tell me. I need to talk to you. So the guy told me, come tomorrow, Lovington, 9 p.m., Kengeles, I think. 
I've never been to Lavington. I don't even know where Lavington is. I'm 19. So I went to my dad and mom and told them Mr. Fidel wants to see me tomorrow morning at 9. So my mom gave me her suit. My dad gave me a 100 bob bus fare and kapanda basi till Lavington. Getting there, um I was there with my 100. Now it was 50 bob cuz I I already to the bus. So I didn't even have money for juice. But the waiter kept, you know, alikuwa na shina kitembea. I'm like, damn it, why are you walking around? I'm, I don't have money to buy. And you know, it's loving to and all that money. And I have 50 bob. But I said, you know what? I prayed. I said, God, let me just use this 50 bob that I have because this guy has been walking here for 15 minutes. And I really felt like, you know, Fidel was not coming. Anyway, I ordered a juice. Immediately I ordered the juice. Fidel comes in with bodyguards nini he came straight to me like there are a lot of wazungus white people but he came straight to me why because i was the only one who looked confused he just knew mm, dio ule <laughs> so he came straight to me with the bodyguards and he asked are you Beatrice? He said yes then he sat down told the bodyguards to go so I was there he asked me so what can i do for you i was really shaking i don't have a proposal i have nothing just my idea So I told him I was shaking you know you know just when you're talking in that ka voice ya ku shake that's what that was happening to me so I, was, I told him my name is Beatrice and I want to start an online magazine please tell me what to do this is exactly what he told me may his soul rest in peace he told me Beatrice I'm a very busy person but the reason I came here is because I've seen and had something in you and I promise you in the next five years will be a force to reckon with in the media industry. I was shocked. I was like, why is he telling me this? Me in my mind, I'm just thinking, who's pe- going to pay this juice? Because I have 50 bob, man. Anyway, he told me that. Then he asked me, what do you want? Then he said, I said, I just need your advice. So he said, this is what I'm going to do. He took out his checkbook. Remember, I'm 19. I don't even know how a checkbook looks like. He took out his checkbook. He asked me, "How much do you want?" I'm just from high school. The much I know is 5000 bob. So I'm like, should I ask for 5000? I'm a 5000 is too much. I'm a, you know what? 5000 is too much. Let me tell him whatever, you know, whatever amount. So I told him, since I didn't uh, was not expecting money, to be honest, I did not expect money. I just wanted him to guide me. He told me I'm going to write a check for you. So he gave me a six figure amount. I've never seen such money in my life. So he told me go with this money to Equity Bank. Give them they'll give you the money. Bank Kenya I've never even been in a bank. So he asked me. So he I think he noticed. He asked me, "Do you even know how to check this?" I said, "I don't know." So um he told me I'm going to take you Luckily he paid for the juice. Then he asked me, "Do you have do you have money to go to ta- do you have transport to go to town?" I said, "No." Then he said, "Come join me." That was my first time in a Range Rover Sport. I was there in the middle with the bodyguards were kubwa. And there I was in the tiny girl in the middle. So they dropped me in town. Uh, I still have 50 bob. I still have to go into industrial area to Equity Bank. Yet my parents live in Buruburu. So that 50 bob how am I going to you know divide it so I say I told myself if this is a lie then my dad will pay with his phone this taxi so I took a taxi to uh, Equity Bank I got the money I went home with it my parents were surprised they prayed we all prayed then um I ended up buying computers and so on and so forth I started my first company at 19 By the time um I went on by the time I was 21 I bought my first car at 21 then at 24 is when I started the online radio which I employed Kangede for the first time <laughs> the radio station was in my house in Gumo <laughs> it was in my house and they used to my dining table was the the studio <laughs> briefly about branding because what you're talking about is what you have done to make sure your business and your businesses how many they are you know 
you know, they get to the place that they are today. Talk to us just a little bit briefly about branding. How can somebody create a brand that actually sells? Um, I have a branding company and I started PR and branding when a couple of years back and I started in Kenya. So I had a lot of clients in Kenya, mostly hotels, but I want to venture, wanted to venture more. So in Tanzania is where now I got to get, got, I got the big wigs. But before, of course, I used to do branding for Mr. Ruto. A lot of people come to my office. Some of them have money. They have money but don't know what to do with the money. Okay, most of them are like that. Some don't have money but they have an idea. I don't brush the people who have an idea off because I also had an idea. And I think that's why I, I do branding because someone helped me. So a lot of people come to my office and say, um, I want to start a business, but they have no idea. Business, starting a business is not easy. It's not. Please let nobody lie to you. It's not easy. You will lose a lot. She said it all. You will lose friends, sleepless nights, all those things. But you have to have a strategy, you know. Before you start a business, you have to have a strategy. You have to have the passion. I show people how to penetrate. So with, the, with that money that you have, try and see how you can make your brand known. Right now, everything is so, so easy because there's social media. If you do not use social media, I don't know which country you're in or which world you're in. Social media is so powerful. But social media comes with a lot of things. You can't just be, say today, oh, you know what? It is said we do social media. Okay, today I'm going to open an Instagram account with one follower. No. You also need to have a lot of networking. You need to come to such places. You need to, you know, to follow people who are doing the same thing that you're doing. You need to follow people like Hannah who do, who give advices on what to do. So you need to grow your brand through social media because social media is so powerful right now. And also, if you have a good brand, yeah? If you have a good brand and you have friends maybe like me or Hannah or Kanyade, who are well known, just tell them. Maybe you have maybe Mafta, you want to start a lotion. You tell maybe Beatrice, yo, why don't you take one sample? Jipake, you know? Tell people about it. That's a strategy for marketing people don't know. Use people so that your brand can be known. Use ambassadors for your brand. It's so easy, but it's still so hard. Yeah? And at the same time, don't expect that you start now, then tomorrow you are a billionaire. Mm-mm. at all you have to work really really hard